Hello everybody. Welcome back to Open Foam. Today we want to talk about moving on from the Kuwait flow to more you know standard things you see in undergraduate fluid mechanics. Yeah, so we want to do some of those simple cases today. So here I am. Here I am in the tutorial folder. And we sound checkable. Anyway, so we are going to continue. Let's see what we have here. Okay, I've just pressed LS four times for some reason. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so uh, we want to do pressure driven flow first. So I'm going to copy that Kuwait case. So CP space dash AR and Kuwait. And let's name it pressure. Uh, parallel plate. Okay, so this is our pressure parallel plate case. So let's change directory there, and we shall start by you know changing some boundary conditions first. So let me bring paint out, MS Paint. So let's just draw that scenario. Yeah, for parallel plate, the top plate was moving to the right at one meter a second. One meter a second, so to speak, or whatever unit that was, I can't really remember. And the velocity profile was something like this. Okay, so the one meter per second here, and it varies linearly all the way down. So now you want a pressure driven flow. So obviously, the top floor, you don't want it to move anymore. So let's delete this. And you want a pressure driven flow, maybe you have a pressure equals to P1. And the pressure here will be equals to some value P2. Okay, so these are the boundary conditions. You want the top to be fixed, the bottom to be fixed, the right pressure to be P1, the left, uh, the left pressure to be P1, the right pressure to be P2. Then you have some kind of a pressure drop flow. Okay, uh, then the velocity, we kind of just leave it alone. It's just a pressure boundary conditions that are pretty important. Uh, velocity only follows the nose dip at the walls here. So that's what the pressure driven flow I'm talking about. And of course, before I start, um, I always like to automate things a bit. So before I actually change those boundary conditions, I actually want to make a run file, a run script. So, let's make a run script. So just to automate things. So what would we normally type into this IcoFoam solver for OpenFoam? You'll type block. Okay, insert first block. Block mesh. That's usually the, usually the first command. Secondly, we will have IcoFoam. And these are the two commands to run. And thirdly, we we'll want to touch. And what we have here, um, <coughs> what we want to name it as, we call it a pressure parallel plate dot foam. That's all. Colon WQ, escape colon WQ, press enter. And we have this run script. And let's do a ch mod 755 dot forward slash run. So let's try doing that run file. And it should do our open form really nicely. See it's running now. A bit slow, but alright. Seven seconds. It's done. And you see we have all the data files that we want. So let's clean it up because uh, just to reset it and we have it right where we want it. Just at the beginning. Okay. Alright, so now we have a uh, auto run kind of a uh, bash script. Let's change the boundary conditions like we were talking about. So let's go to the zero directory. And then we have two files here the U file and the P file. So let's uh, change the U. Okay. The U file 
the moving wall on top is not moving anymore. So we'll have to delete this. And then I'll just replace it with a uniform value of 0. Now of course you could use the no slip condition here. That will give you exactly the same result. But I know I'm uh, kind of doing things the lazy way. So I just want to change the top fixed value to a uniform of 0 velocity. 0 velocity and that's essentially a no slip condition. So we are done with our u velocity uh, kind of profile. <coughs> Excuse me. Profile or boundary condition. So I'm going to save and exit with WQ. Let's go to the pressure. And we see that it's all zero gradient. Now, what do we do? We know that we need to change the left side and the right side. So what kind of, how are we supposed to type the boundary condition? Uh, what is the, what does the syntax look like? So if you ever forget, Let's just quit this file first. If you ever forget, we can go to this uh, file in the tutorials. So I've copied the tutorial files here. You can go to basic. And then you look for this thing called potential fold. Where they have an example of a pressure driven flow over a cylinder. And then we can look at their boundary conditions. So CD zero the original. Let's go for P. Take a look at the right side. Fixed value, uniform zero. Okay, it's not a pressure driven flow, but uh, you can see at the right side the uh, pressure is a fixed value of zero. So it's not like uh, the velocity field. Velocity is a vector. That's why you see three. Uh, let's navigate back first. Let's go one more. Oh. CD para pressure. Okay, CD zero. Let's look at the velocity file again. You see that this fixed value has three coordinates x, y, and z because it is a vector. But pressure being a scalar, it doesn't need a three numbers to describe it you just need a value so let's go edit the pressure file now let's take a look I'm going to delete whatever is in here I'm going to paste what I've copied just now using the control C and I use a right click to paste so the right side should be a uniform value of zero and the left side okay I'm going to delete this this is going to be a uniform value of 1. It's just any random you know, pressure I'm putting in, just to at least get a velocity profile shape. And just delete some spaces to make it look nicer. And that's all. And let's run the file. Okay, so since we have this, let's take a look at this in Paraview. So I'm going to come here, take this pressure parallel plate case, paste it here. So that's easy to look at from a Paraview. Let's Paraview, a file, then you'll open, now open this file. Go to the cuvet, uh, go up one folder, navigate up, and we'll find a pressure parallel plate. And I'm going to take this pressure parallel plate not foam. Let's open. Uh, see, look at this. The first thing that comes up is a pressure profile. So on the left, it's the highest pressure. On the right, is the lowest pressure. That's exactly what we want. No fault there. Looks like open forms uh, do, done a good job. Let's look at the velocity profile now. And you see the velocity magnitude. At the walls, it is the lowest. And at the center, it is the highest. It's a very standard uh, you know, laminar flow profile, which uh, I studied before in the fluid mechanics. So let's take a look at the velocity profile. 
uh, visually at least. So we'll go to filters, common, glyphs. Okay, so now the glyphs, of course, they are not scaled according to velocity. They are, for some reason, scaled in pressure. So we'll need to change it to velocity. U, press apply. There you go. And let's take this off. And, uh, if you noticed, the arrows are biggest in the center, smallest at the sides. <coughs> Excuse me. Which is basically what we would expect of a velocity flow profile. Now you're probably wondering why is it red here and why is it blue here. Well, reason being, you can take a look at this. It's uh, pressure. It's scaled according, as in the color, is according to the pressure. So you look at the right, there's a pressure scale here that shows the, the coloring according to that. And take a look. We, it's uh, to the left is the highest pressure, so it's red in color. Oh, to the left it's the highest pressure, so it's red in color. Yes, and to the right it is lowest pressure, so it is blue in color. Now, if you don't want that because it's causing confusion, we just change it to solid color or any other thing here. You know, we just have a plain velocity profile, as you can see here. And then, if you want uh, comparison. Okay, if you want a comparison, uh, yeah, you can look at the velocity magnitude kind of a profile again. So this is what it should look like. And you want to visualize it using a outline, that's even better. And you can see what's the velocity profile like. Now, that's uh, about all I have for you know an example of a pressure-driven flow in the parallel plate scenario. So as you can see, it's just changing some boundary conditions and voila, there is your, um, your kind of a, yeah, that's your velocity profile right there. And that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.